Over the past 10 months, I've been working on a 2D, 3D hybrid beat-em-up in Unreal Engine 5. My last devlog got a lot of attention and had many people praise the way the game looks, even though I was basically just ranting about sockets for 5 minutes. But I gotta let you in on a little secret. As it stands, the game is not fun to play. For this project, my main focus was on finding the limits of Paper 2D and making interesting devlogs and tutorials for YouTube. So instead of fixing bugs and refactoring, I just jumped straight into the next big and exciting task, which led to my game becoming more and more unstable over time. There are some glaring issues such as my character softlocking sometimes when attacking, the combo attack not going to the next move correctly, enemies becoming invincible, and the lack of an input buffer made the game feel stiff overall. Also I applied some changes to the look of the game over time that actually ended up making it look worse, such as zooming in the camera more and getting rid of the depth of field. So in this video I'll work out a lot of those issues to get the game back into a stable state and reignite my passion for this project. The first quick thing I took care of was zooming out the camera again. I thought bringing it closer would make things easier to see, however I really like that miniature look you get by having the camera further away and think this makes the game look more unique. But I'll probably keep on experimenting with fine tuning the exact distance. Then I added a subtle depth of field effect right in the camera's blueprint so it'll be active on all maps without me having to set it in the post processing volume each time. I then went on to finally take care of the sprite scale. So far I just set the sprite scale in the character blueprint, however there's actually a better way to go about this. I can simply use the pixel per unit settings on the sprite which is actually a lot more consistent and will help prevent some weird bugs, since the scale isn't just decided by the blueprint. And if you use the same pixel per unit settings for all your sprites, it'll ensure that you have consistent pixel sizes for all of your art. After that it was time to clean up the animation graph. The warrior character has quite a lot of attacks and having to create multiple transitional conditions quickly turned the animation blueprint into a mess. In 3D games we'd usually use animation montages for one-off animations like this, which keeps the animation graph clean. And as it turns out there's actually something similar in Paper ZD called jump nodes. A jump node will allow us to force a new animation state simply by calling a function from a blueprint without having to go through any transitional conditions. In this case I want to jab when the attack button is pressed for the first time. I then created a mapping from the current combo count to the jump name and put in jump nodes for all other attacks of the basic combo. But the animation graph can be cleaned up a lot more by using a nested graph. The locomotion state can be cached and then be used within another state machine that only handles attacks. Now the animation graph is a lot more organized and easier to work with. Then it was finally time to work on a simple input buffer. In case you don't know what an input buffer is or what it's good for, let me give you a really quick rundown. The way we usually handle inputs in Unreal Engine is to create an input event. In the case of the jump button we then make the character jump if the button is pressed. However, what happens if we press the button even a millisecond before our character lands on the ground again? Well, since it's airborne the moment we press the button, it can't jump and nothing will happen. An input buffer will basically remember our input for a set amount of seconds or frames and apply it when it makes sense. When we have an input buffer of 0.2 seconds for example, the character will jump the moment it lands, even if we press the button a little bit too early. The same concept can then also be applied to attacks to allow a smooth input for chain attacks. Eventually I also want to have a buffer for directional inputs so I can possibly have some advanced special moves similarly to fight and rage. However that gets pretty complicated to set up so for now I'm happy with my simple input buffer, since that already makes the game feel so much more responsive. You might remember a previous video where I set up the combo attack system. The whole system was actually pretty hard to figure out and I'm still having some bugs with it, such as the attack chain not going into the next move correctly sometimes. To once and for all get rid of these issues, I decided to turn the combo system into a component and extract it from the character blueprint. I basically just had to bring over all the variables and functions and then call them through the component. This cleanup process alone let me find all of the issues with the system much easier and will also make it more future proof. Playing the game and having the combo get stuck was super frustrating, so I'm really happy to have finally fixed this essential part of the combat system. I then took another look at the screw system, which I implemented together with the knockback. The issue with it is that it only really works for characters that have the pivot in the middle, like the sandbag. Other characters like the skeleton won't spin at a correct axis and it just looks weird. So for now I just made it an option that can be turned on or off on a by character basis. During the last video I enabled Lumen, but I haven't really shown you the cool things it enables me to do. One really nice thing with Lumen is that materials and particle effects that are emissive will now naturally emit light onto other objects. 
This can create a really cool look together with pixel art and the normal map setup which I have, especially in dark areas. So I definitely plan on having some caves or inside areas in the game eventually to really show this off. In the next video I'll take care of another part of my game that currently isn't fun, which is the enemy AI. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when the video is out. As always, thanks to my amazing patrons who support the creation of these videos.